Teslas include a lot of features, but many of them are included on screen. Sometimes they can be a bit hidden in menus, so customers don't entirely know all that their vehicles offer. At the same time, customers may not know about a big feature their car came with. So today we're going to break down the top tips, tricks, and secrets for your Tesla with the latest software update. Let's get into it. One of the newest features Tesla added is Apple Music. And if it's not already in your dock, you can access that by clicking this button right here to open up your dock and click Apple Music. Then you have all of your Apple Music. Listen now, browse, radio library, and the way you would log in initially to this is with a QR code. With the addition of Apple Music came these new media controls. So now the media control is right here at all times on screen. So I'm listening to this song right here and I can bring this up to show other stuff related to it. I can show my recents and favorites, choose my sources, and I can click this to bring up sources, options, balance, and tone. There's also a new search button right here which allows me to search whatever I'm gonna search for, and then the results come up and they're distinguished. Here's title results, here's Apple Music results, all of that stuff. But this player basically lives here at all times now. So if I go here and close Apple Music entirely, this is gonna stay here at all times. And one thing you'll notice as well is that your shuffle buttons and your repeat buttons are there for Apple Music, but they're not yet there for Tidal. Some things to get used to here are that when you close this entirely, it drops down into here. Then you press that and it comes up here. So this is always gonna be easily accessible either right here or right here. Your media controls are basically always gonna be there. But then if you just have this open and you tap this, it's gonna open up music. Then if you close this, it actually goes up here. So now your music controls are gonna be at the top right here. And if you wanna bring it back, it's right here again. Tap that, it disappears from here and goes right down here. Another thing that's new is these three dots right here. So you have your music card here, but you could swipe over and see your odometer and swipe over and see your tire pressure. And of course, since your music controls are no longer right there, they have moved up to here. Basically at any time your music controls are either right here, right here, or in this little box right here after you've closed everything. Another thing Tesla added with this new update is MyQ Garage Support. So Homelink used to be an option, it still is an option, but that's a $300 upgrade that you have to get at a Tesla service center and it works fairly well. But MyQ integration is right here at the top here. You can click this and click Link MyQ Account. A QR code pops up and you scan that and then you link your MyQ account and then you have access to your garage doors. If you've ever wondered if you could keep your car in auto but adjust the fan speed, you can now do that. So right now I have it on auto but I have my temperature at 70. I can tap this and I can turn my vents up but it's gonna stay in auto. So it's still in auto, everything's fine but I turn my vents on high, medium, or low. And then if I really wanna dial it in and go manual, it can go between one and 10. One little quick tip here is that if you're trying to adjust your volume on screen or you're trying to adjust your temperature on screen, both of those can be swiped. So if it's 70 in here and I just immediately need it to be as low as possible, I can just tap here and swipe. Now I'm at low, I can swipe all the way back up to high and everything in between. Same applies for volume, but you'll notice it's all the way on the right side of the screen, so it can be tough to swipe to the right. But let's say my volume is all the way up and I just immediately need it to be down to zero and muted. I can just tap here and swipe all the way down. Additionally, you can just tap the volume control and then swipe within this little bar. That button as well is gonna bring up all of your tone and all your various audio settings. One new thing Tesla added in this recent holiday update is Zoom meetings. So you can do that right here and here's a quick demo of what that looks like. Jessica is entering the waiting room, so I'm gonna admit her. How does it look and sound? Uh, it looks fine, it's like a little washed out. Interesting, yeah. The thing I'm figuring, like the camera's up here and then the screen's down here, so that is a little more than usual like I'm just you're just seeing a lot of my head if I'm looking at the screen I'm gonna go into drive okay can you hear me though it moved to an audio call yeah and then I go into park and then I can click zoom up here maybe and then I can start video and I'm back yep. one fun Easter egg this time of year is Santa mode so you can go to your toy box here and just enable Santa right here. You click jingle all the way right here and it's gonna play some Christmas music for you and turn this into Santa's sleigh. Check it out. Another thing this time of year is the light show. You can do this anytime, but you can click schedule show. You can choose any time within the next 10 minutes that the light show is gonna happen with your vehicle. And they have two shows now, Auld Lang Syne and Carol of the Bells. And you can play this, it plays music from the outside of the car, has the lights doing a whole show. It's actually pretty fun. Another small Easter egg that they just changed a little bit is Rainbow Road. Instead of enabling this and it plays the SNL More Cowbell sketch and turns the road into a rainbow, you just click Always Rainbows and then anytime you're driving and using autopilot, 
the road will be a rainbow. One quick tip is if you have mirror settings that you want to dial in, sometimes people don't know where this is because it's actually not in like your normal settings. You can't get it from any of these menus except the main controls menu when you click on mirrors. So sometimes people think this is a little bit buried so they don't know exactly where it is, but you go to controls, mirrors, and then you have options to turn on or off, mirror auto tilt, mirror auto fold, and mirror auto dim as well as your normal mirror adjustments. One really cool setting that is new that people don't fully understand sometimes is apply brakes when regenerative braking is limited. The description says it all. So it says regenerative braking is limited when your battery is cold or close to 100% charged. This setting applies regular brakes on release of accelerator pedal to mimic full regenerative braking in these scenarios. A lot of times people get super used to regenerative braking to the point where when they're at 100% charge, it's absolutely jarring to feel like a normal car where you have to use the brakes. So this setting basically mimics that with your normal brakes. It's really great to have on. When you set up multiple driver profiles and multiple keys, say your iPhone or various things, you might want to link those to your profile. A lot of times this isn't going to happen automatically, but you want it to be linked to your key so that when you get in, it's automatically going to adjust to your settings. The way that you do this is when your key is selected right here and your driver profile that you want it to be in is selected, you just tap this little icon. So now I'm switched into my driver profile and my key is actually linked to Jessica right now. So I'm going to go ahead and tap this and now it's linked to Ryan Shaw. One very helpful setting for safety can be this driver door unlock mode. So when you turn this on, it says when enabled, the driver door and charge port will unlock when the key is detected near the driver's side of the vehicle. Holding down the interior driver door button will unlock the rest of the vehicle. So when you arrive somewhere and go into park, typically the entire car is going to unlock. But if you don't feel safe doing that, and you just want this door to unlock, this is what you would want to turn on. Only the driver door will be unlocked, or I can press and hold and all the doors will unlock. Real quick tip for when you're cleaning the screen, they have screen clean mode right here under display settings. You clean it with a soft cloth designed for monitors and display, and then you tap and hold here to exit screen clean mode when you're done. One setting that sometimes isn't set up by default, but you're probably going to want to have on is your dash cam. So under safety, dash cam, you can make sure this is turned to auto and on honk. So anytime you honk the horn, going to save your dash cam clip and it's going to automatically save it when it thinks it's necessary. That uses all the cameras around the car and puts it onto the USB drive that is now included in the glove box of all Teslas. So maps are going to be your default screen most of the time and most people are going to use this a lot. It's a really great map integration but sometimes not everything you want to see is there on screen. Like right now I don't see any superchargers but how do I get it? I don't see the options. A lot of times you just need to tap once and those options come up tap again and they disappear. So tap once. Now I can click chargers and I can see all the chargers in my area. I can also tap for other destinations. I can turn on and off traffic and I can switch to satellite view all with these options. All right there, super easy in the top right corner, but sometimes you have to tap the screen once for them to actually appear. So right now I'm in navigation and this is now changed to where it's split into two separate parts. So your ETA is going to be at the bottom and your next step is going to be at the top at all times. I think it looks really great. But if you want to edit this trip or add other stops, you would do it by clicking these three dots. You have the option to add a stop. What you'll notice when you add a stop is that it's always going to add that as the first stop. So let's say I put Tito's Tacos in. Um, it's going to calculate here and Tito's and then my next destination are going to be in order. If I want to then reorder that, I press these dots again and click edit trip and I can just tap these lines on the side to reorder it to exactly what I need. The last option after clicking those dots is settings that brings up various navigation settings. One quick tip here is that depending on the time of day, the car is going to navigate you either to home or to work if you just tap here and swipe. So right now it's about the time of day that I'd be heading home from work. So instead of having to click in and choose my address or even click twice just to click home, which is saved, I just swipe down and boom, I'm navigating home. If there's a destination you don't want to be in your destination history for whatever reason, you just swipe on it and that'll delete it. One thing I wish is that you could batch delete these, but really you have to do them individually. Another cool little feature is that if you want to share a destination from your phone to your car, you can do that very easily. Here I'm in Google Maps and I have my destination. I click share and then I swipe over to the Tesla app, click Tesla. And as long as this car was the most recent car in your app selected, if you have multiple, then it's going to share to this car. So now that destination popped up and it's automatically routing. It's very handy. Every Tesla owner is going to have a different thing that they like to access all the time on screen. That's why you can customize the dock. So for me, I like to keep my rear view camera here at all times so that I can see my side and rear camera at any time when driving or whatnot. I just tap that. It's the first thing I have right there. Then I have title. And I'm going to actually probably add Apple Music in here now that they've finally added that. So let's see how to do that. I don't necessarily need the Energy app right there. So I just tap and hold. And then I can delete the Energy app, 
move Apple Music down. I can do all sorts of other things. And what you'll notice too is that I have heated seats right over here. Now in this season, I need heated seats, but in most seasons in California, I'm not really gonna be turning these on. So if I wanna get rid of that, I can just click that X and it disappears but I can add them back at any time. And then as soon as I have a passenger, it'll add the right seat as well. You can also add the heated steering wheel anywhere you want in the main apps, or you can delete that. Wipers, rear defrost, front defrost. These are all quick access controls that you can access elsewhere, but if you wanna have them in your dock at all times, you can customize that. One setting that you may want to have on if you have kids and the chimes are very loud in the car is Joe mode. This is under safety, Joe mode, and it says enabling Joe mode reduces the volume of your car's chimes. The Model Y, Model S, and Model X now all include a HEPA filter by default, so it's gonna be using that for normal filtration when you're taking an air from the outside of the car. But if you wanna take it to the next level and go to bioweapon defense mode, you can do that by tapping into climate controls and pressing this button right here. That is your bioweapon defense mode. You'll notice the car gets very loud and the vents get very loud. In the app, I can go down here on climate and click bioweapon defense mode, and that's gonna turn on in the vehicle. You also have options for camp mode, dog mode, cabin overheat protection, where you can choose the temperature that it's gonna turn on on, and then defrost and change your temperature. This is where you would change heated seats and all that as well. But not only can you customize the dock in your vehicle, but you can customize the quick controls in your app. So I just tap and hold on this control right here, and if I want, I can add bioweapon defense mode to one of my quick options. Let's say I live somewhere that I need it frequently and I always want to turn the car on right away with bioweapon defense mode, then I can do it from the app with that quick control. Another little Easter egg here is that you can actually put fart into these quick controls and then the outside of the car is going to fart every time you press that button. Teslas include a lot of things, but if you're looking to upgrade certain things, like full self-driving, you really want to try it out, try out that subscription, or you don't have premium connectivity, under settings and upgrades is where you can do that. I can swipe to subscribe right here to the full self-driving subscription. Since Teslas are such software-focused vehicles as well, sometimes they will have issues. Sometimes the best way to fix an issue, if you have it on screen, is just gonna be to reboot the vehicle. So this is a software reboot, and you can actually do this while driving. All vehicle functions are gonna work fine, but you press and hold both scroll wheels, and then after a little bit, it's gonna restart the vehicle. The Tesla logo will pull up on screen, and there we go, it turned black. Now I can release the scroll wheels and eventually the Tesla logo is gonna pop up. There it is. So that is a software reboot of the vehicle. Sometimes if something freezes on screen, that's what you'll need to do. One menu in settings that seems a little counterintuitive to me is the Bluetooth menu. So if you need to change Bluetooth settings, the way you're gonna do it is you go to Bluetooth and then you actually click connect phone, even if your phone's already connected. Because right here I see Ryan's iPhone 14 Pro and I feel like I can tap this, but nothing happens. So I can't actually adjust settings. I just click connect phone. And there it is right there, along with any other phones that are connected via Bluetooth to this car. Within those settings though, you can choose priority device. So if you're the primary driver of this car, but there's sometimes multiple people that have their phones connected, you can choose priority device and that'll be the first device that it connects to. Within the pedals and steering menu, if you've ever wondered what stopping mode is, you have creep, roll, and hold. I think hold is what you should be in all the time. It makes for the best one pedal driving experience, but the menu explains it pretty well. Creep will slowly move when pedals are pressed, Roll will roll when pedals are released, and then hold is gonna maximize range by extending regenerative braking to lower speeds and automatically blends in brakes to hold the vehicle at a stop. I personally think this is what everyone should have on at all times, but if you're having a hard transition from a gas vehicle to an EV, trying out creeper roll could be helpful for you. The next very small thing is if you prefer to look at miles versus percentage, or you prefer to switch between the two, you can just tap it right here. So I see 76%, tap 244 miles. That's of course Tesla's estimate, not necessarily your real world range. So most people know how to shift just fine in their Tesla. You press down on the stock to go into drive, and then you press the button to go into park. But there's actually a secondary parking brake option here. You press and hold, and then it's gonna engage that secondary parking brake. So again, if you're in drive, you press, and you're in your normal park, or you press and hold, and you can hear that engage. For whatever reason, if you need to go into neutral, a lot of people do this accidentally at first, but then forget how to do it. You actually just press down like kind of halfway on the stock and you're gonna go into neutral. This will come in handy if you're going to a car wash and so will car wash mode, which you can get to under settings and you go service, car wash mode, and then you enter car wash mode. It's gonna lock all the doors and the windows and the charge port and all that and then make sure that you're in roll. It actually makes it pretty easy so you don't have to actually do that kind of difficult to get into neutral. You enter car wash mode, and then it closed my mirrors, it did everything. And now I have free roll enabled, which you can just tap on screen to enable that instead of having to shift into neutral. One thing that people might worry about in this car is that since hold mode can really feel a lot like park, 
What happens if you open the door and leave and the car doesn't go into park? Well, that's not going to happen because I'm right now I'm in hold mode. So I'm in drive. I can drive right here just fine. And then I come to a stop and I open the door. It automatically goes into park for me. Another new feature to these cars is auto turn signals, and this was taken from the Model S and X. So when you make a lane change and you signal to do so, once you actually complete the maneuver, it's going to turn off your signal for you so that you don't have to go and press the stock again. You can get there by going to lights and then auto turn signals and turn on auto cancel. Another thing that might be nice to keep in mind is if you don't like auto brights, but they are required for Tesla Vision Autopilot, a way that you can turn that off is by pressing the left stock forward. You have to have auto brights on when you enter autopilot. This can actually be frustrating because auto brights have a mixed reliability. So the way that you can bypass this is not on screen, but with the stock itself. So right now I'm going to engage auto steer and we can see that auto brights automatically turned on right here. And the way that I can turn them off is just pushing the left stock forward and auto brights are now off. If I want to turn them back on, I can do the same motion again. Technically, this is bypassing the requirement that auto brights need to be on for auto steer. But for right now, it works and it helps a lot because auto brights for me have been super unreliable. If you have a hatchback Tesla, one thing you might find is that your trunk will open too far in your garage if it's too low or in whatever situation you're parking in. So what you can do there is you open the hatch and then you stop it where it needs to be stopped and then you press and hold the button in the rear and then it's only going to open to that adjustment in the future. If you have a Model S or X refresh, you're going to shift on screen. So some people worry what happens if the screen goes out. And that's where these backup shifters come into play at the base of the wireless charger. They're not always displayed there, but they will pop up if you tap there and then you can shift using these buttons. Then in every Tesla, there's a button on the charger. Not only does this help you release the charger when you need to release it from your vehicle, but on approach to the vehicle, you can press this button and it will open the charge port door for you. The Tesla app also has so many features that sometimes people don't know where all of them are. First is a little one if you want to check your tire pressure. You can go to controls here and at the top right there's a little PSI button. You can tap that and your tire pressure is going to pop up. Another quick thing to note here is the start button. So let's say the person driving your car lost their key or you're away from home and you lost your key but your wife has access here. You can go ahead and click start. And then you have two minutes to actually start the vehicle. If you were away and your neighbor needed to move your car for you or something, this could be very useful because you can unlock the car from the app and start it so they can drive it within the next two minutes. Another feature that just recently got updated further is sentry mode live streaming. So under security and drivers, there's sentry mode right here. So you can turn this on and when it's enabled and you've given permission initially from the Tesla screen, you can view live camera from here. When enabled as well, this will come up on the main screen as a big button right here, live camera. You can view four of the exterior cameras and now the interior camera when you're away. Other options from this menu are to honk, flash, fart, or talk through the vehicle. Also available in security and drivers is valet mode, which limits vehicle access, the performance of the vehicle, the glove box, all sorts of stuff. And then speed limit mode will limit the top speed. If you have Tesla insurance right here, or you've been in the FSD beta program, you'll see safety score beta. So you can tap that and then you can see your safety score and why it's so low. That's, that's weird, aggressive turning apparently and forward collision warnings. Definitely something I can work on. Another feature that can be very helpful in cold climates if your doors and your door handles get frozen over is you can actually unlatch the door from the app. So you can add this in quick controls. I'll tap and hold right here to change this and I can add unlatch door. So I'm gonna tap this and see what happens. It just unlatched and opened my door. So sometimes if you can't actually get the handle to function, this might be what you need. Again, the way I accessed that was in quick control. So you tap and hold to get this to come up. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and put my charge percentage back, but you can unlatch your door and add that option there. One last small thing you'll notice that they recently changed and updated is down at the very bottom of your app, you can click release notes. And this is going to give you the latest release notes for the latest version of software. For this one, it gives you a lot of release notes because there are a lot of new features. When you're in autopilot, the way that you would control your speed, let's say I want to go down is with the right scroll wheel, scrolling it down one mile per hour at a time. But if I really want to ramp this up quickly, I can just flick it up and that's five miles per hour at a time. Another feature sometimes people can forget about are voice commands. There are actually a number of voice commands you can do in this car by pressing the right scroll wheel and speaking. You can set the volume, set volume to six. You can change the temperature, change temperature to 72. Open music. Open Apple music. Open rear camera. 
A lot of these actually work very quickly, and for some people it's much better than having to tap on screen while driving. You just press this button on the wheel where you're already holding, and then do a voice command and it'll pop up pretty quickly. I noticed that one was really fast. Open rear camera. There it is. Open the glove box. Put temperature at 66. Open trunk. Close trunk. Open autopilot settings. Basically any menu that you can navigate to, it feels like you can do with a voice command and that's pretty impressive. Open pedals and steering. So I could do that from home if I'm navigating somewhere. If I'm in maps right here and I want to navigate to pedals and steering but I don't want to tap here and then tap pedals and steering, I can just click pedals and steering. And there it is. Cancel navigation. Navigate to Tito's Tacos in Culver City. Raise the steering wheel. Open arcade. Voice commands are one of those things where you could look up a list of voice commands, but I would personally just play with it and see what possible things you can get out of it. If it's a voice command you're curious about, just give it a try in the car, see if it can do it. It might add a lot of convenience to your Tesla experience. So there it is. That's my full list of Easter eggs, tips, and tricks for Teslas, and I tried my best to include everything I find useful or fun in the vehicle. Out of these, which tip or trick is your favorite in a Tesla though? And did I miss any? Tesla updates their software so often that sometimes it's tough to keep up. Leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, if you want to see a collaboration from some of your favorite Tesla and EV YouTubers about 2023 predictions, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.